one in 7,000. When Elisha responded the second time to the question, where are you? God gave Elijah, who possessed a renewed mind of Yahweh God, an assignment. He would travel again to anoint two new kings that would be used to dismantle the reign of Ahab. He also sent to Elisha, who would succeed him as prophet. After all the drama, the Lord said to Elijah, I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Elisha was wrong. He was not the only one who had stayed true to the Lord. He was thinking God's divine attention on him was because he was the last one, but God's divine attention was simply out of his nature of love. There were 7,000 and God counted them. He knew them. Yet not one was asked to join the company of Elijah. Out of the company of 7,000 men, only one was chosen to succeed Elijah, Elisha. It was Elisha whom the kings of Judah, Edom, and Israel sought out to hear a word from the Lord when they entered a time of crisis in 2 Kings 3. When the whole earth was filled with wickedness, God found Noah and saved a nation. God needed a man to bring the Israelites out of Egypt into Canaan, and he called Moses through a burning bush. God chose Joshua and Daniel. He raised up Esther to save his people from one man, Haman. He used one little boy's loaves and fishes to feed 5,000. The Bible is full of stories how God used just one. Gideon, David, Samson, Deborah, Hannah, Samuel, Nehemiah, Peter, and Paul. Philip, like Elisha, was zealous to spread the good news of Jesus to others. He went to the Samaritans, a despised people, and he sparked a revival in Acts 8, 4 through 8. Later, the Lord plucked out Philip from the revival and sent him to one man, an Ethiopian, who wanted to understand the scriptures. Because of Philip's obedience, the Ethiopian was saved. He was baptized and he went on his way rejoicing. Acts 28, 26 through 28. History tells us of men who have been used by God to build his church. Charles Wesley, John Wesley, Martin Luther, D.L. Moody, Charles Spurgeon, John Wycliffe, William Tyndale, C.S. Lewis, John Calvin, William Booth, John Smith. Looking back over the last 20 centuries, we can see that God, at a particular place in a particular time, raises up one to restore the truths of His Word. In the same way, God chooses you. He appoints you to study and show yourself approved. He searches for the one who is tested and proved. If no one is up to the task, God waits until such a one is available. God does not make decisions based on worldly standards. He does not settle for the best option available at the time. He searches for the one who is remembering Him, who is connecting to Him. One person in the hands of God is a majority. May you remember God as He is. May you be ready for your appointed task. There are things that only you can do. Hear His gentle, still, small voice. Be still, know that He is God. When you are the one He calls, are you prepared to leave behind or let go of whatever may entangle you and simply say yes? Your assignment is fluid based on your age, maturity, equipping, and level of faith. You are never outside of God's reach, no matter where you are. God is calling you to something he is appointing you to something only you can do. What glorious words to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, 21. You are enough.